Dragons in a Bag, Chapter Five. I reached to the bottom of the I reached the bottom of the stairs before I realized that I've still got Elroy's book tucked under my arm. I'm not sure why I brought it with me, but I know I'm not going back to that apartment. I tell myself I'll give it to Mama and let her take it back to Ma. I sure hope Mama and her lawyer win in court today. If we get evicted, we might have to move in with Ma. And I don't want to see that mean old lady ever again. Once I reach the street, I slow down and take a moment to catch my breath. I put the heavy book inside my bag and I zip it up. If I'm gonna stay with the Patels, I'll need to call Vic. But I don't have a cell phone and I don't see any pay phones on this block. I know it's unlikely that mama will come back soon. So I drop onto the front steps of the neighboring building and I try to come up with a plan. 10 minutes go by before I hear a tap, tap, tap sound on the pavement. I glance up and sure enough, Ma is making her way toward me with her cane. She points at me and calls out, you boy. I tell myself that I don't have to look at her and Mama always said that I didn't have to respond to anyone who called me out of my name. The tap, tap, tap sound doesn't stop though, and soon Ma is standing before me on the sidewalk. She's wearing black leather shoes, but I can see the hem of her purple house coat hanging below her beige overcoat. Ma must have hurried to catch up with me. She's a little out of breath, so neither of us are saying anything for a minute. I look down the block wishing I could make Mama suddenly appear. Ma looks the other way, like she's waiting for someone too. Finally, she clears her throat and says, <clears throat> I gotta make a delivery. When I respond, didn't respond, Ma coughs slightly and asks, <clears throat> you coming, boy? Ma isn't looking at me, but her voice isn't as harsh as it was before. Something tells me Ma's not the sort of person who's good at apologies. That's okay with me, because I'm not planning on apologizing either. My name's Jackson, I said quietly. Ma grunts and squints at me. <laughs> That's your daddy's name. I frown. I don't want to talk about my father. So I just shrug and say, That's my name. But you can call me Jax. Ma nods and says, Let's go, Jack. It's Jax with an X. Ma looks annoyed, but she nods again and waits for me to get up. I heave my book bag onto my shoulder and we start walking up the block slowly because that's how Ma hobbles along with her cane. For a long while, we don't say a word. Then Ma clears her throat and says, your, ma your mama calls me Ma because I used to look after her when she was a little girl. Her mother left her with me, but we ain't related. I'm just an old friend of the family. Why didn't my, gran why didn't my grandmother leave Mama with you, I ask. Ma stops walking and leans on her cane. She takes a few deep breaths and then looks down at me. Raising a child is the hardest job in the world, Jax. I should know, I've raised plenty but ain't none of them mine. Like a lot of women, your granny needed help. Raising a child on her own was more than she could handle. So she came to me cause she knew I needed help too. What kind of help, like with chores? Boy, please, Ma said impatiently. I frown and wait for her to call me by my name. Ma rolls her eyes, but tries again. You've seen my home, Jax. It was nice and tidy until you let that darn squirrel into my kitchen. I don't need anyone's help to clean the house. Back, back then, I needed a different kind of help. Another name for that kind of helper is apprentice. Ma pushes herself forward and starts walking once more. I want to move, but all the thoughts suddenly swirling in my head are making me dizzy. I take a deep breath and I try to focus. Apprentice. The only time I've seen that word is when it comes after another word. 
sorcerer. If Mama was the apprentice, does that mean Ma is a... Then I start to wonder, is Mama really at court today? What if she doesn't come back for me? If I stay with Ma for good, does that mean I'm gonna become her apprentice? A fly nearly zooms into my open mouth, so I close it and I hurry to catch up with Ma. She's squinting even though the sky is full of gloomy clouds. It was sunny just a moment ago, but I don't have time to think about the weather right now. I need to know the truth. So, Mama was your apprentice. Ma shakes her head and says, she could have been. Had a lot of potential, your mama. Alicia was a very bright girl and curious like you, but she wanted an ordinary life. Ma clears her throat before spitting a wad of phlegm onto the street. So that's what she got. I think about that for a minute. Is getting evicted ordinary? It sure doesn't seem normal to me. I get the feeling Ma wishes Mama had made different decisions in her life. But Mama had become Ma's apprentice all those years ago. If she had, would she still have met my daddy and had me? If I were Ma's apprentice, I'd probably already know what she's keeping inside that red mint tin. Elroy's thick book weighs heavy in my bag, so I make an educated guess. Your friend in Madagascar, he sent you some lizards, didn't he? I hold my breath and don't exhale until Ma nods. That gives me the courage to ask another question. He's the same man who wrote that book, right? That book you stole. I, I didn't steal it, I stammer. I just borrowed it for a while. I slide one arm free and swing my backpack around so I can unzip it. Here, I'll give it back. Ma stops again and glares at me. What am I going to do with a heavy, big book out here in the street? She's right, of course. So I zip my bag and slip my arm back through the strap. To my surprise, Ma chuckles. Besides, I done read that book half a dozen times already. I gave Ma the side eye. Said you didn't read any of those books. And you knew I wasn't telling the truth. You're no fool, Jax. I'll give you that much. It's not exactly a compliment, but Ma still got something like a smile on her face so I dare to ask another question. Why was that squirrel trying to give marshmallows to your lizards? Ma's smile disappears. She looks down the block and whistles softly. Every living creature needs help to survive in this world, Jax. I do the best I can for the creatures in my care, but sometimes Ma brings her milky black gaze back to my face. Then she puts her thumb on one of my creeping caterpillar eyebrows and tries to smooth out the curly hair. Mama does that too, and it always makes me smile because we both know our eyebrows won't ever be tamed. Sometimes you can't let your love show, Ma says in a soft but firm voice. Sometimes you have to say no when you wanna say yes because it's the responsible thing to do. These dry uh, uh, lizards can't stay here, Jax. They came from one world and they're on their way to another. Are they hungry? Probably this kind of newborn loves sweet, sticky things, but I can't give them what they want. Why not? If I feed them, they'll think I was their mama you know what imprint means? I think for a moment. Vocabulary isn't really one of my specialties, but I'll give it a shot anyway. When something heavy makes an impression on something light, light or soft, like when you step in mud or wet cement and leave a footprint, my not. That's right. In the animal world, it's a little bit different. Some animals don't know how to be, who to be until they open their eyes for the very first time. These little critters need to be kept in the dark until they're with their own kind. 
I couldn't let them see me or you. Why can't they stay here? You could buy a terrarium from the pet store and another lizard who can show them how to do lizard stuff. I could help you look after them. Ma looks up and down the block and sadly shakes her head. Brooklyn ain't what it used to be. Sometimes I look around and hardly recognize this, pla recognize this place. Artisanal this and organic that. I used to know the name of everyone in my building and they knew mine. Now I don't even know half the folks on my floor. They move in and act like strangers, not neighbors. Ma sighs and starts walking again. That's the new way of the world, I guess. Out with the old and in with the new. Sure is a shame, though. Brooklyn's lost its magic. All kinds of creatures used to call this place home, but not anymore. I think about the notices our landlord keeps putting on our front door. Everybody should have a home, I say, and get to stay there as long as they want. It's an ideal world. In an ideal world, that would be true, Ma says, but that's not the world we live in, Jax. I feel my eyes filling with tears again, so I come up with another question. Where are you taking the lizards? Prospect Park Zoo? Ma shakes her head. These lizards are, um, special. They need a whole lot of space so they could spread their, I mean, they need room to grow. Elroy sent them to me because he knew I wouldn't put them in a cage. So he is your friend, Ma grunts. Elroy's a quack. He calls himself a scientist, but most of the time he just makes stuff up and hopes folks won't know the difference. But you know, she nods and says with a hint of pride, it's my job to know what's fact and what's fiction. Then my points are cane at the park up ahead and adds, that's where we're going. Now, Jax, can you keep a secret? Cause I don't need your mama hassling me about mixing you up in my business. That's why she left home in the first place. She didn't like my line of work. What line of work is that? I ask, feeling silly for thinking my mom might be a sorcerer. Are you a veterinarian? No, Jax, I'm not a vet. What are you then? Ma looks both ways before pushing me into the empty street with her cane. I wait to see if she'll answer my question, but she doesn't respond until we reach the other side of the street. Then she turns and just stares at me for what feels like a really long time. Your mama really didn't tell you nothing about me, Ma asked finally. No, ma'am, I said truthfully. Ma grunts. You got nice manners. I'll give you that, she says. Then she sighs and leans heavily on her cane so heavily I'm worried that it might snap into. What you need to know, Jax, is I'm a witch. She says it simply, like it's no big deal. Then Ma pushes herself on her cane and hobbles over to the park.